Okay, so our next scene is Act 3, Scene 3, Hamlet and Claudius. Badly shaken by the play, Claudius, the king caught in a mousetrap, has had it with Hamlet's carry-on. It's clear to him that the young prince is a threat. He tasks Rosencrantz and Guildenstern with escorting Hamlet to exile in England, where he plans to have him executed. Meanwhile, Polonius tells Claudius of his plan to hide in the Queen's chamber and spy on Hamlet's chat with his man. This foreshadows the dramatic irony that unfolds in the Queen's chamber in the next scene. Meanwhile, all alone, Claudius sinks to his knees and prays. Here we get a glimpse of the conscience of the king. Here, for the very first time, we see his humanity and his vulnerability. He confesses to the murder of his brother, whispering, Oh, my offence is rank. It smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. Hamlet sneaks into the room with the intention of killing Claudius, but seeing him in prayer, confessing, he decides against it, concluding that if he kills him while he is seeking forgiveness, then his wicked uncle's soul might find redemption, which his own father was not afforded. Now might I do it, Pat. Now he is praying, and now I'll do it, and so he goes to heaven, and so I am revenged. Our key quote in this scene is, Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, mine own ambition, and my queen. Our themes here are forgiveness, revenge, regret, and divine justice. The next one is Act 3, Scene 4. Queen Gertrude's Chamber. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the baddest of them all? This is the scene where we really get to know Queen Gertrude. In Queen Gertrude's chamber, the snaky Polonius is hiding behind a tapestry to spy on Hamlet and his mother. Hamlet bursts in all blood and bluster and he's raging. Queen Gertrude cries out for help. From behind the tapestry, Polonius also cries for help. Hamlet immediately thinks it's Claudius. How now? A rat? He draws his sword and thinking him to be his uncle, he stabs Polonius to death. Seeing he has killed a relatively innocent, albeit snaky man in Polonius, the intruding fool, he starts rebuking his mother, yelling at her, giving out stink, telling her he will wring her heart for marrying his uncle, and he's having a right go when the ghost turns up to remind him of his ghostly command and his duty of revenge. Gertrude, unable to see the ghost, thinks that he's talking to himself and she pities his madness. The ghost exits and Hamlet is going into pretty pornographically graphic detail, urging Gertrude to abandon Claudius' bed. He tells her of his exile and the plot he suspects against him and how he will violently counter it. He leaves his mother's chamber, dragging Polonius' body. Our themes here are maternal love, madness, and the ghostly command. Our big symbols here are the mirrors. There's mirrors everywhere, no more so than in the words that Hamlet delivers to his mother with every new shocking revelation, with every new dagger of truth. Our key quote here is Gertrude. Oh, speak to me no more. These words like daggers enter in mine ears.